held down today, and that is in D, D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. So down to a D, A, D, down to an F sharp, just a semitone, down to an A, and down to a D. I'm actually going to use a capo because it's, it's really too low for me to sing without one, but I will be giving the fret, the fret numbers as if there wasn't a capo. Okay, so I've got cap on fret two. And um, I'm going to remind you of um, the scale that I used in the Rambling Man video. So that's the what I'm calling the E major seven shape. So if this was in standard tuning, that would be called an E major seven. That would be an E major. So blank two blank one blank blank. <laughs> like that. Blank two blank one blank blank. Um, so you're alternating between a E major seven shape and an A major seven shape up the fret to the twelfth fret. So that's the first one. Moved up two frets, then to an A major seven shape on the um, fifth fret. So blank five, blank five, blank blank, blank seven, blank seven, blank blank. Back to an E major seven shape. It's on the eleventh fret, and then the twelfth fret is the octave is an A major seven shape. that well particularly this one is that you the the chord sequences are all visible they make sense to me you know if you're doing a if you're in standard tuning and you're doing a c you know making a song out of a c a g a d and an a which many people do um you know it's different <laughs> it's different positions on the bass that are you know not chronological or i don't know they don't follow each other logically but in a tuning, you've, you've organized it so that you're in a really simple order. And a lot of songs that I've made um, um, come from this structure because I just understand it. So Rambling Man is the inversion of that. So there's this version of that scale. Rounding man is that's all sort of contained in this area, this top five fret area, and uh, many others um, that I have written are in that area too. And um, as I said in the Rounding Man one, lots of sort of traditional country songs and loads of Jamie songs. I've looked at love from both sides now, from up and down, and still somehow it's life's illusions. I recall, I really don't know love at all. It's all in that tuning. And um, so that's that. You've got this scale, and you've got this scale. Also, can add a bass note onto that first scale. I told you. you can add the bass note, which is just the same as the this finger, just adding the, the bass note on the same fret. And that to me just adds richness to the chord. appropriate you know you've got to use it you've got to use those chunkier sounding chords in the right places so that but that leads us to how can I and how can I is quite simple and sort of embarrassingly similar to rambling man so that's how it starts so that's also very similar to the beginning of rambling man and it's the first two notes of that two chords of that scale so open string first position of that scale second position of that scale first position and off so and you're on the you're on the fifth fret barring the fifth fret 
And what I'm also doing, I think I've said this in another video as well, is how I'm getting that rhythm. Is I'm lifting off, it's hard to explain, but very easy to, to learn if you do it yourself. So I'm lifting off on the fret side. I'm also strumming, obviously, but I'm lifting off on the fret side to give it more definition between the chords, and that gives you a bit more rhythm to play with. I'm also muting. I'm muting with my part, uh, what is that, the heel of my palm. identical in fact it is identical to give me to which is why I don't play them next to each other in the set because it would give away too many things um, it could have been you so that is the inversion inversion of the the scale that I showed you so it's just using the top string sounding chord with with the bass notes the, the top uh, bottom string so that's the uh, ninth fret so nine nine blank eight yeah is that right yes nine nine blank eight seven seven blank seven four four blank three so And then up to the octave. So we've got the same first two chords. And then 12, 12, blank 12. Which is also the, um, the chorus. So that's the same. The, the, the next verse is the same with the vamping. And then you do the. And that's quite important to um, use the, the heel of your palm to mute between those chords. Uh, and then there's a middle eight, which is almost entirely the. Where I belong, where I belong. 
album, but that's how I sing it now. The last verse, I, the last chorus I sing, How Will I Live Without You? Because I think it's sadder. Um, so that's that. That's How Can I? It's one of my favourite songs to play live. Um, because in the, in the choruses you can really belt it out. And sometimes that's nice. So, I'm also going to show you I speak because I can. Which is quite simple. And I'm going to show you it, how I play it now. So I, I strum it now. So on the record I think it sort of picked in a strange way. I'm going to show you, show you how I play it now. So I really utilise that a hammering hammering on and muting of the strings on the fret. So this is entirely that um, that scale. So fifth fret, uh, sorry, octave. Octave and then one up from the octave. So blank 12, blank 12, blank blank. And if you know, if you're confused, I've got a capo on the second fret. I'm just uh, so I can sing it to you. So your guitar might sound different if you don't have a capo. So 12th fret, 11th, uh, 13th fret, same same shape. And then you're working your way down the scale. So octave, next one down, and that you major seven shape. So again, based on that scale. <clears throat> My husband left me last night. Left me a poor. across the fourth fret, uh, sorry, a finger across the fourth fret. I swear it was not my choice to reach out for someone wise. And then, um, Then you've got this sort of middle 80 bit. In the breaking of the morning, you'll be dancing on my soft lawn. So again, that's a just fleshed out version of the shapes from the from the scales. So seven blank seven seven, five blank five five. In the breaking of the morning, you'll be dancing on my soft lawn.
is a mix of nails. All these things are, are boring, I'll grant you that, but I think um, if you just get, if you spend a little time trying to understand the tone of your guitar and how to uh, approach it, it'll make It'll make playing so much more satisfying for you. I know lots of you um, know that already, but I see quite a lot of people asking about strumming patterns. And I guess I'll do a dedicated one to strumming and picking and also to like exercises that you can do and fun chord things to help you expand your vocabulary. Because I think the things that I wasn't taught or that are harder to learn are things like expanding your... Um, sort of tonal vocabulary and that's so important that's so like vital to so symbiotic the relationship to the to the sound and how you write um you know whether you're writing just words or music it's really can change everything and then you know your relationship to the guitar is up to you but getting a nice tone out of it's really important and it takes a little while you know and it's different for every guitar as well so for this one using the, the flesh of my finger, the back of my thumb, sorry, back side of my thumb, and the nails of my hand. Because if I did, I hate, I really hate the sound of a, of a harshly strummed acoustic guitar. I think it's dreadful, played with a pick, personally. I would never, well, I've only done that in desperate times. Um, so there's a softness to your nails that's not quite, to the, to the back of your nails, it's not quite the same. Slightly picking it up on, on the back, on the back. But I'm using, again, I'm using this hammering on and off. Anyway, that's for another, that's for another time, maybe. <laughs> um, so that's all for this week. And I, I don't know if I need to do follow-ups because for some reason this is saving straight to my um, feed anyway. So I may be able to just leave it at that. And I'll think of something a bit more useful to do next week. Maybe I'll ask some of my guitar playing pals what they recommend for, for, for newer players to expand. And uh, that's it. I hope you have a nice week. Bye-bye.